Philadelphia Stadium as the Navy team has come back on the field. Army is already out. And now we look forward to a torrid second half of the 61st meeting. Army has won 30, Navy 25. There have been five ties. The Navy GOAT, as you see, is leading the Navy squad on the field. It's the Navy GOAT and the Army Mule. Here's anchors away. Discussing the option for the second half, the team that lost the toss of the coin gets the option of what to do to open the second half. And in just a moment, we'll see what that option has been. For those that have joined us late, Navy's in the dark jerseys and Army's in white. Kurt, I'd like to ask one thing uh, of you. I don't know whether you have any inside information. You suppose Mr. Bellino has his same bet with the barber that he had in the Air Force game? That was the barber. He bet that uh, Navy would defeat Air Force by 30 points and he would score three touchdowns. I think Wayne Harden uh, kiddingly told Bellino this week, listen, don't make any bets. That Army will be mad enough without you <laughs> betting. <laughs> Navy is going to defend the goal on your right and Army the goal on your left. Navy checking in its First team, Army is going to receive, and Navy will be kicking off, which means that Greg Mather will be doing the kicking. Number 44 is Joe Blackgrove, the scat back of the Army. He'll be the deep man back on the five-yard line. Right back. Navy ahead, 17-0. Number 85 is Greg Mather from Woodland Hills, California. A junior, 212 pounds. And now here we go for the second half of Army and Navy. Fumbled on the 10-yard line, picked up by Kirschenbauer to the 15 to the 20, and downed on his 22-yard line by Greg Mather, who did the kicking off, number 85. We have had tremendous play by the ends of both teams today. Here's your passing yardage from the first half. 12 for 19 for Spooner in the Navy for 126 yards. 3 for 7 for Bland in the Army for a total of 36 yards. Army breaking up now. To the, out of the huddle of Bland to 18 at quarterback. Bland to Kirschenbauer. Kirschenbauer doesn't get much as he runs into the middle of that Navy line led by Steve Hoy. And John Hewitt, Hoy is 66, also is Vistad, 52. Vistad's been an outstanding center for Navy all year. Second down, nine to go for the Army. And wide is Adams. Around his 28-yard line, filled by Dadlio and Driscoll. Glenn Adams, number 16, carried. Dadlio is 88. We haven't had much opportunity to mention the linemen in this game today, but the one candidate for the Army, for All-American possibilities at least, is Al Vanderbush, number 64, their left guard. You people who like to watch linemen, he just pulled out there and made a fine block. The lonely end is out and splitting wide is the front back, Kirschenbauer. There's a draw play coming up over the 30 is Adams. Brought down by Ron McKean in the Navy secondary. Helped by John Hewitt. Glenn Adams carried the ball, number 16. That's very close to a first down, so close that they want to measure. We're two minutes into the third quarter with Navy out in front, 17 to nothing. Navy has won eight and lost one this year. They win this game, they'll very likely go to one of the major bowl games and there's a chance Army might, if they could win. Army's won six, lost two and tied one. Here's the measurement. That's close. 
That ball just, the nose of the ball just missing. And it was so close, you saw referee Coffin had to take a real look at it. Here's a halftime score, Georgia Tech 6 and Georgia nothing. As a point of information on that measurement, if the nose of the ball even touches the post, that's far enough for a first and ten. It doesn't have to exceed the post. Army's ball first down on the Army 32. Got the long end out, Zamata. Adams in motion. Landis fading. A quick pass. Incomplete. Pass intended for Kirschenbauer. Kirschenbauer number 45. Wayne Hardison was right on top of Kirschenbauer. Second down, 10 to go for Army. Landis a quarterback. Kirschenbauer and Adams a halfback. And Ruchat to the fullback. The Mitre goes out as a lonely end. In motion, Adams, land of The pass, good to the 45, up to the 50 is John Ellison. From Hampton, Virginia. He was pulled down by Payne Hardison and Ron McKean. And now Army, a team that didn't throw the ball much in the first half, is starting to move in the air. Army's ball, first down. Let's call it the Navy 48. Really the 48 and a half, but it's a little bit closer to the 48. Lonely end is out. Zemida. Adams in motion. Landa fading again. Out to the lonely end. He's got it. And he's dropped on the 36-yard line. Paul Zemida, number 85, brought down by John Pritchard. The lonely end, you know, invented by Red Blake, didn't used to join the huddle. They gave him hand and foot signals. But uh, Dale Hall said he was afraid the opponents were stealing the sign, so they've got him in the huddle this year. And he's the lonely end, Paul Zemida. Army's moving now in the air. They have a first down on the Navy, 36. Zemida split wide to the right of the lonely end. They give the ball to Ruchak to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, and down to the 18-yard line. Ruchatz, number 31, Army's leading ground gainer. Frank Vista stopped him, and Army is moving. That run was good for 18 yards. First down Army on the Navy, 18. The Mida split wide. In motion is Adams. Fading is Blanda. The quick pass is good to the 13-yard line. To Kirschenbauer, number 45. You know, there's nothing that'll give a passer confidence in a couple of completions in a row. It looks like Tom Bland has settled down now, and he's throwing very well. We saw some sensational passing by Hal Spooner in the first half, and now Tom Blanda in the second half. Blanda set the all-time Army record a couple of three weeks ago against Pittsburgh. They give it to Ruchat as he cracks to the 10-yard line. Al Ruchat's the fullback. Down at the bottom of that Navy pile is Frank Vistard again, number 52. He's been consistently giving the ball to the fullback on that drive series, and we can almost expect the fake to have in a pitch out before too long. Army's ball, third down, two to go. Navy's ahead, 17 to nothing. Nearly five minutes gone in the third quarter as Army's in the midst of a tremendous drive. There's the lonely and Zemida, number 85. Blanda gives the ball off to Kirschenbauer as he hits for that first down. George Kirschenbauer from Allendale, New Jersey, a junior. Ron McKean's building. First down and goal to go for Army. This is a 71 yard drive by the Army right now. And Navy wants to call time. It is time out here at Philadelphia Stadium with a score Navy 17 and Army nothing.
In today's L&M, fine tobaccos can be blended. Blended, blended, blended. Not to suit a filter, but to suit your taste. Friendly flavor that doesn't dry out your taste ever. Reach for flavor. Reach for L&M. Army has spun off five first downs in a row. Tom Bland has hit three out of four passes on this drive as Army has moved 71 yards, taking the kickoff of the second half. Dale Hall, the Army coach, of course, hoping his team can grab a quick score here and put Army back into the game. First down and goal to go. It's Blanda to Adams. He's cutting to the five to the three. Glenn Adams running hard on the power playoff tackle. Frank Vista, John Hewitt, and Ron Urschel stopped him. It'll be second down, and let's make it four to go for an Army touchdown. Rushak. Maybe expected Rushak up the middle. Ron Urschel hitting. Number 62, Hewitt's played a tremendous game also today for Navy. It's on the two yard line now. And these last yards inside the 10 are hard to get. That fellow's really set up for cheering, isn't he? Third down and two to go for an Army touchdown. Zemitas will only end. Kirschenbauer. Almost to that goal line. They'll have to untangle. Looks like he's about a foot short. Kirschenbauer drove to the one-foot line. Gatlio and Frank Vista made the tackle. And this is a big play for Army. I was going to say the understatement of the year would be to say this is a big play. It really is for Army. Fourth down, a foot to go. And going in, Bruchat. Army scores. to cap an Army drive that carried 78 yards in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 plays. Navy gave ground grudgingly there in that last seven yards, but Al Ruchatz from Allentown, Pennsylvania, the junior fullback of the Army, their leading ground gainer, carried it over, and it's now 17 to 6 in favor of Navy. A touchdown came. With seven minutes, 55 seconds to go in the third period. Army's going to go for two. Blanda fakes to Adam. He throws. No good. Pass and tenant for Zemida, number 85. So our score remains Navy 17 and Army 6. John Pritchard was trying to cover Zemida. Well, as we told you, uh, in the first half, Army threw that ball sparingly, but now they've opened up. They put that lonely end out. Blanda took to the air, and Paul, that was a beautiful drive. That was uh, well conducted and a fine quarterbacking job all the way down the line. Now, there's the Army Mule, incidentally, uh, two of them and three of them. And in fact, they're probably pretty happy about this time. That was a fine sequence all the way down the field, as we mentioned by Tom Blanda. And he's calling his own signals, incidentally. They are not changing players in there. His coach is not to call the signals for him. And he mixed them up very well, runs and passes inside and outside and handled it perfectly all the way down. They had a penalty on the extra point, so Army will kick off from the Navy 45. Tom Blanda, the Army quarterback, will do the kicking. South Carolina leads Wake Forest 15 to 14 at the end of the half. Here's the boot by Blanda. Out of bounds. Tom Blanda, whose brother is George Blanda, great professional star with the Chicago Bears and now the Houston Oilers. Blanda's quite a place-kicking specialist himself. He's kicked four field goals this year and also is Army's extra point kicker. It was Blanda's field goal that beat Syracuse for Army. Army this time will kick it off from the 50-yard line. A penalty took place on the try for extra point. 
Bellino will be one of the deep men on the near side. And Pritchard on the far side for Navy. They're two deep men. Here's Brian the booting again. This one's fumbled in the end zone. Bellino running it out. And they've got him on the 12-yard line. Gary Clements, number 72, down covering the kickoff. Navy dominating the first half. Army coming back to march 78 yards for a touchdown in the second half. Navy has Hal Spooner quarterback. Bellino, left half, 27. McKeon at fullback and Pritchard at right half. Pritchard is flanking. On the cross butt, it is McCune who carries. Number 36 from El Paso. Al Ruchat and Gary Clemens in on a tackle for Army. A yard gain, second down. Nine to go. Well, a team can get fired up, Army, for that drive. There goes Pritchett, flashes wide again. There's Bellino trying to get outside. And they spill him down short of the 15-yard line. Joe Bellino trying to get running room outside as he was driven out by Kirschenbauer. Third down now and eight to go. Army hoping to hold, get that ball, and Brian moves again. We have six minutes, 35 seconds left to go in the third period. Pritchard flanking. They draw play. It is given to Bellino. Spooner faded back with a fake pass to Bellino, who went to the 15-yard line. Number 54 is George Jowen, and number 76 is Dale Coon in on that last tackle. And now Navy presented with a fourth down situation. Fourth and seven. Greg Mather will go in to do the punting, as Army's going to back, drop back a safety man. Number 44, Joe Blackrove. Mather will boot it from about his four-yard line with a slight wind at his back. Gets it away. Big high kick that they get some good coverage on is, is bounding around in Army territory and is dead on the Army 44-yard line. Kick from scrimmage 41 yards, a fine punt by Greg Mather. John Hewitt, number 62, is down there to cover the punt. All right, Army's ball. Last time they had it, they marked 78 yards for a touchdown. Let's see what they do now. Payne Hardison comes in in defense to the Navy in the secondary, replacing Spooner. Army has that same backfield in there. Blanda, Kirschenbauer, Ruchatz, and Adams. The might of the lonely and split wide to the right. Kirschenbauer in motion goes to Adams on a counter play. He picks up two yards to the Army 46 yard line. Frank Bisted, number 52, and number 67, Doug Faulkner, in on the tackle. Ron McCune in at fullback. Matt Alabi out for the Navy. Second down, eight to go for Army. The score is 17 to 6 in favor of the Navy. Christian Barr flank wide with a long end to the right. Lander throwing the pass to 45, up to the 50. To the 45 is Rusat and driving for the first down. Al Rusat, number 31. We have a penalty marker down, however. Army first down may be nullified. And that's downfield, the ineligible receiver. Ineligible receiver downfield in the pass. That'll be a loss of 15 yards. Ineligible receiver downfield for the Army. Well, that's a tough one for the cadets. And as we have mentioned several times previously in this season, the tip-off on that screen pass coming up is when the passer drops back, instead of the usual seven yards, he drops back about 15, trying to draw those defensive men, uh, those linemen in, and tosses off to the side. But when he goes back so deep, you can almost tell the screen is coming up. Army now has a second down and 22 yards to go. Land of fading. There's a pass to the sidelines. The is knocked away on a great defensive effort by the Navy's 
McEwen, the fullback, number 36. You saw him dive for that one. Third down and 22 to go. Army's ball on the Army 32. Dick Eckert, number 10, is coming to quarterback for the Army, replacing Tom Blanda. The score is 17 to 6, Navy leading. We have four and a half minutes remaining in the third period. Kirschenbauer out in motion. Rolling out is Eckert. Eckert throws a screen pass back to the far side. They were trying to unroll the screen pass again, but couldn't get it moving. It was to Rujat. Maybe had that one smothered. And Army has a first down, a fourth down coming with 22 yards to go. Paul Stanley, number 40, the Army punter, comes in, replacing Dick Eckert. And Navy has sent Joe Bellino into the game to drop back as their safety man. There he is, number 27. The high pass, there's trouble, and Navy will take over on the Army 17-yard line. Look at that charge. McEwen is 36, and is 62. Hewitt has been outstanding as a defensive guard for the Navy today. Hal Spooner comes in, replacing Payne Hardison in the Navy backfield. Navy's ball on the Army 18, first down. They have a timeout coming up. Timeout on Navy. It's timeout here at Philadelphia Stadium with a score, Navy 17 and Army 6. The new cars are really great this year with fabulous new styling, dramatic new features, Two minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the third period. Maybe ahead, 17 to 6. The motion is Adams. Fumble. The handoff was to Ruchat. Looks like he recovered his own fumble. Number 31 down at the bottom of the file, Al Ruchat. Right on top of him was John Hewitt and Ron Erskel for the Navy. Second down, 10 to go for the Army. Maybe he's in a 5-4 right now. Here's Adams. The 20. And to his 23-yard line, met by 64, Tony Lucci from Aaronville, Pennsylvania, and Frank Battaglio from Winchester, Massachusetts, number 88. Army is sending in Gary Clements, maybe with a play, number 72 at right tackle, replacing Bob McCarthy. Third down and four to go for Army on their own 23. The mitre of the lonely end out to the left. Adams in motion. Landa throwing a slant pass to the lonely end. The mitre, who just slants in from the far sideline, John Pritcher tackled him. And he's down on the Army 31. And that's one of the most difficult patterns in the world for a defensive team to cover. A real fine call there. Because the receiver is running at a 45 degree angle across the field. And he's running opposite the path of all of the defenders. Army now has completed seven for 15 passes in the game. The lonely end Zemitas out again. Lana to Adams. Adams over his 35 and up to his 37 yard line filled by Tony Lucci. It is second down and four to go for the Army. They've marched 78 yards to one touchdown in this quarter. Two the Navy backfield. The Midas split wide again. Landa to Rusak. On the belly play, hitting up the middle to the Army 40-yard line. Number 67, Doug Falconer was the man who brought Ruchaps down. We have 15 seconds left to go in this quarter. Third down and a yard to go for the Army. Two kings and a halfback now for Army, number 24. 
And there he is carrying. And he's decided to get up to his 40. He may not have made it. Tony Lucci stopped him. Well, he was trying to drive for that first down. And it's the end of the third quarter here with the score. Navy 17 and Army 6. Here's the man who's in for a shaving treat. Vanta fixed him up with a luxurious Gillette Executive Adjustable Razor. It's handsomely gold-plated, a gift anyone can use with pride and great satisfaction. There are nine different blade settings on this micrometer dial. It adjusts the blade edge instantly for any combination of skin and beard. The price, $5. You get clean, clean, comfortable shave. Or here's the gift set for only $2.75. A Gillette adjustable razor, a dispenser of super blue blades, and foamy instant lather. And for an expensive gift, just see these Gillette super blue blades in gay gift wrapping, 50 for $3.45, 30 for $2. A nearby store has these and other Gillette gifts from 69 cents or less to $5 or more. As we go to the fourth quarter, is Paul Fishman. That last play is going to live to hunt. Mr. Blanda because he had third down and about two and a half feet to go and he elected to run the wide play and you saw what happened. This is not offered as a second guess because when you go for the wide play in that situation instead of the first down you might pick yourself up 35 yards and that's what he tried to do. But in this case a man broke through and that cost him the first and ten. All right here's a big play for Army. Fourth and a yard to go. Eckert's the quarterback. He's a good runner. And he gives the ball to the fullback, Rusev, who bangs through and looks like he's got that first down. Now, Rusev, that was a vital play for the Army. First down for Army as they kept the ball. They gambled in their own territory. They're trailing 17 to 6, and they have to retain possession. Eckert, number 10, running the club. Kirschenbauer in motion. There's Eckert to the 45, to the 50. Dick Eckert, who is a better running back than Tom Blanda, but not as good as passer. Eckert's a sophomore from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. John Zenya stopped him. And I believe that's the first time we've seen him fail to hand off to the fullback on that drive series. And, of course, he picked up some very fine yardage there because Navy, by this time, is playing to the inside. Second down and two to go for the Army on the 50-yard line, or just nudging in the Navy territory. In motion is King. Eckhart to Kirschenbauer. He might have got a yard, George Kirschenbauer. Number 61 was Vern Barnsido, and number 80 is Gary Kellner for the Navy. They have third down and a yard to go. Navy ahead, 17 to 6, a minute and a half gone in the fourth quarter. The Midas split wide. Rusev on the quick opener to the 34-yard line of the Navy, where Al Hughes had to stop him along with Vic Meyer, or he might have been gone. Now just the fact that Eckert kept the ball in the last play and failed to hand off the fullback, that opened up that sequence in this case, because this time he did hand off to the fullback, and Navy again has expected him to go wide, because they've been running inside all day. So when he came back with the inside play, it opened beautifully. That was a 15-yard run by Rushak. Army's ball first down on the Navy 34. Christian Bauer in motion with the end split. Eckhart is fading, throws the pass with a good at the 27-yard line to Ellerson, number 87. Tony Lucci drifted over to help bring him down. Seven-yard gain, second down and three to go. And this has been a different Army team in the second half than in the first half. They have stopped Navy. Army's marched 78 yards for one touchdown, and they're in a drive right now. Second down, about three to go for the Army. Kirschenbauer in motion. Eckhart keeping the ball out to Kirschenbauer, and he's hit for a loss. Dropped back in the 30-yard line by Greg Mather. 
Well, by now we have a real guessing game going on that play, and this time Navy guessed right and Army guessed wrong, and this is what makes this game so interesting because you're always trying to outguess that defense. Tom Bland has come back in a quarterback for the Army, replacing Dick Eckhart. Third down and five to go for Army on the Navy 30. Kings in motion. Land is fading under pressure. Completes the pass to the 20-yard line. And driving to the 17-yard line is Hirschenbauer, number 45, a junior from Allendale, New Jersey. Lander was sent in the pass, and he's been a hot passer in the second half, just as Hal Spooner was a blistering passer for Navy in the first half. Army's ball, first down on the Navy 17. Lonely end is out. The motion is Kirschenbauer. Landed a Ruchat. Ruchat picks up a couple of yards. In the middle of that Navy line, number 61, Bonsaito. And there's number 65, Dick Fitzgerald, the tackle on the play. Now Dick Eckert is back in a quarterback as Dale Hall is alternating those quarterbacks with a signal. Number 10 is Eckert. Good runner, remember, on the rollout play. Second down, eight to go for the Army. Person Bauer in motion. Eckhart keeping the ball. A lateral out to King, and King is out on the nine-yard line of the Navy. Pete King from Watson, New Jersey, driven out. Gary Kellner drove him out of bounds. The clock stopped. We have a little over 10 minutes left in the game. And a third down and two to go for Army on the Navy nine-yard line. Navy's ahead, 17 to six. Eckert to Ruchak. Ruchak almost to the five-yard line. Tony Lucci hit him. Vern Von Saito and the cadets now are rooting their team on. And that's a first down for Army and goal to go on the Navy five. And look at Army. That Ruchat has been tough for Army in the second half up the middle. Christian Bauer in motion. Eckhart keeping. Still on his feet. Dick Eckhart, a fine runner for a quarterback, a sophomore. As you saw, was hit behind the line of scrimmage, but shook away. And Lucci brought him down on the one, on the half-yard line. Second down and a half-yard to go for an Army touchdown. Army's already marked 78 yards for one score in the second half. And here they are, right on the Navy goal line. Ruchak! Ruchak scores 31. That's his second touchdown of the game. And Army's right back in here. That makes it now Navy 17 and Army 12. Tom Bland has come in to replace the sophomore quarterback, Dick Ecker. That was quite a drive. As Army went, 83 yards on that drive. They have marked 78 and 83. They're going for the two points. Bland is fading. The pass intercepted. No good in the end zone. They try for point. No good. And it is time out here at Philadelphia Stadium with the score, Navy 17 and Army 12. Two seconds. Two seconds. Now a man's deodorant, new Gillette Right Guard. Two seconds give you 24-hour protection. Dries instantly on contact. Only new Right Guard, the power spray deodorant, can give you complete protection. So fast, so conveniently. Not this, messy creams you have to rub in. Not this, gummy roll-ons that waste time. Not this, hit-and-miss sprays that drip. But this, push-button power spray ease and speed, cool and refreshing. And Right Guard dries on contact. It destroys odor-causing bacteria, checks perspiration, gets right through for complete coverage where odor begins. So remember, with new Right Guard deodorant for men. Two seconds. 
24 hour protection. Get right guard today at a nearby store. Just 89 cents. Army will kick off. Army's made 10 first downs in the second half, maybe none. Army's marched 78 yards and 83 yards for touchdown. There's 21, John Pritchard, and 27, Joe Bolino, deep for Navy. And Tom Blanda is kicking off. Pritchard takes it on the two-yard line. He's brought down on his 23-yard line by Al Vanderbush, Army's co-captain. And also George Jowan, number 54. Well, Navy hasn't had the ball much in this second half. It's been almost two complete different games. Navy dominated the first half and Army the second half. Now, Hal Spooner will be in a quarterback for the Navy. Bellino and Pritchard at halfback and Matt Alavage at fullback. They're asking the crowd to quiet down. Also, Army is going to call time. There's Wayne Harden, the Navy coach, who saw his team leave the field with a 17-0 halftime lead. And now has watched Army march for two long touchdowns. And this is shaping up into one of the best of all Navy Army games, and there's been some great ones. You know, during the course of this NCAA football television series, we've attempted to tell you a bit of what the NCAA is and what it does. Simply and plainly, the National Collegiate Athletic Association is the colleges and universities of the nation speaking of and acting on athletic matters at the national level. Through the years, the NCAA has become the keystone of intercollegiate athletics. Founded 55 years ago by 13 institutions to save the game of football, the NCAA today is composed of 562 colleges and universities, athletic conferences and associations devoted to the sound administration of intercollegiate athletics in all its phases. Through the NCAA, these colleges and universities accomplish such things as establish and enforce rules of eligibility, formulate the playing rules for 15 sports, publish rule books and guides, conduct 16 national championship events. Through the NCAA, they act on and speak of athletic matters at a national level. Navy's ball on their 23-yard line. The ball goes to Matt Alavage, the fullback, where he's dropped by 54 Jowan, and 62, Mike Cassidy. Now the time is, of course, going to be all important. We have eight and a half minutes left in the game. Navy leading 17 to 12. Pritchard has gone out, and Al Hughes has gone in the Navy backfield. Hughes is flanking to the right. Spooner is fading. Firing deep to Hughes. Or do uh, Bellino downfield as Navy gambling behind tried to go for the long one. And now, of course, we've seen the same psychology we've seen uh, game after game this season. When a team gets a lead and sort of loses its momentum, the question is whether they can pick up that momentum again and get back on the track. And also the question is now whether to play it cozy and protect that small lead or gamble and try to get another score and put the game on ice. Hughes is flanking left, it's third down. Spooner is fading, and he hit! Number 83 broke in to get in. Bob Metzer. Just came into the game, Bob Metzer in. It's down now on the Navy, 16 on the Cadets. Greg Matter will go in on fourth down. It's, they put it on the Navy, 14. And Army is dropping back little Joe Blackgrove, number 44. Matters on the goal line to kick. Kick is coming up. The 45 to midfield, and it'll be dead on the Navy 49-yard line. Army's ball. 38-yard kick from scrimmage, no return. As Army takes over, the clock is moving with seven minutes and 10 seconds left to play. 17 to 12, Navy ahead. Navy scores all their points in the first half. Army's put on two long marches to dominate the second half. Number 18 is Bland to the quarterback. Metzer is split wide, the end. And there goes that fullback. Kappas this time, the second string fullback. Stopped by Hewitt and Vistad. 
Faulkner also on the play. On the 45-yard line of the Navy, Zemida and Metzer and it ends for the Army. Second down and six to go. Now this time they don't put out the lonely end. Landed Adams. By number 52, you listed who slowed him down. And uh, Hardison had Hughes in the secondary came up to make the tackle. A yard and a half gain. Now, Blanda has had very fine success in passing situation with that hooking man down the middle. And it has been open pretty regular. Let's see if he stays with that or goes to the outside. Army has a third down and four to go on the Navy 43-yard line. Army trailing 17 to 12. In motion is Kirschenbauer. Landa rush. That one is incomplete. No good at the Navy 39 yard line. Broken up by Vista 52, intended for Ellerson number 87. I think he tried the outside there just as much to get a completion as if he completed it. The man could have stepped out of bounds and stopped his clock because it is starting to get close now. It's five and a half minutes. Fourth down for the Army and four to go on the Navy 43. Stanley's come in as the Army punter. Bellino is going back deep for the Navy. And the boot is sailing into the end zone for the touchback. Navy's ball on their 20, first down. Army had two long drives to score. This time they were stopped by Navy. The clock shows exactly five and a half minutes left to play. We have a new quarterback now for the Navy, Harry Deets, number 15. Army's asking for timeout. It is timeout here at Philadelphia Stadium with the score Navy 17 and Army 12. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you did say. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. Ooh. Here's a gift that's a beauty and a winner for friends, family, any man on your Christmas list. The Gillette Executive Adjustable Razor. It adjusts instantly at a turn of the dial to match any combination of skin and beard. Richly gold-plated, it comes in this modern case. Price, $5. Here's another winner. Gillette Super Blue Blades and Gailey Holiday Wrap Packages. $30 for $2 or $50 for $3.45. Or this handsomely packaged gift set, including the Gillette Adjustable Razor, Super Blue Blades, and Foamy Instant Lather, only $2.75. Stocking gifts or inexpensive remembrances? Well, how can you top the 195 adjustable razor or a package of Gillette Super Blue Blade? Be sure to look for the complete line of Gillette Christmas gifts from 69 cents or less to $5 or more. Kurt Gowdy with Paul Christman again as Navy will take over on the Navy 20 with a first down. Five and a half minutes left to play. Let's listen to this game. touchdowns in the second half. Al Hughes is flanking wide. Deep fumble. And who's got uh, Looks like an Army recovery. Army recovers. Number 54, Jalwin recovered the fumble. And there's Army's big break. They're on the Navy, 17. Forty-five, Kirschenbauer has come in. Thirty-one is Ruchatz. Ten is Eckert, the sophomore quarterback. And sixteen is Adams. That's the Army backfield. Kirschenbauer in motion. Keeping the ball is Eckhart. Eckhart on the keeper play. Took that ball out of the stomach of the fullback. He has the option to either keep or pitch out to a trailing halfback. Hewitt stopped him. The ball's on the Navy 14-yard line. 
Army has a second down seven to go. This is their big chance. They have scored twice in the second half. And there are four minutes and 20 seconds left to play in the game. And Army has a scoring chance. Jemida split wide, the end. Eckhart running again. He's inside the 10. Eckhart very fast. Adderlahu Adams has stepped out. And they say he stepped out on the 10 yard line. You'll notice that Army is running a man in motion to its left and getting Navy to overshift in that direction, then running back to the weak side. That's why this play is so effective. All right, third down and three to go for the Army on the Navy 10 yard line. There goes Ruchat. Ruchat, the power driving Army fullback, who has scored both Army touchdowns. Looks like about the eight yard line when he untangled. It's Frank Fiskus in the 52. Stopping us on the nine yard line. And this is probably the biggest down of the ball game for Army right here. Fourth down and a yard to go. Fourth and a yard. Ruchak driving 190 pound Eastern Collegiate Wrestling Champion who has been Army's leading ground gainer all season long. Steve Hoy, Frank Vistad, and John Hewitt. That uh, Vistad, number 52, as you've noticed, has really been tremendous for Navy, but it's an Army first down. Army's ball, first and goal to go on the Navy seven. Army recovered a Navy fumble, their first fumble of the game. Now the referee is asking the stand, look at the cadets. They're in their undershirts up in the Army cheering section. It is a near 60 degree temperature today. Of course, they're heated up with battle, but it's also a beautiful afternoon here in Philadelphia. And now the clock shows three minutes to go. Army has the ball on the Navy 7. First down and goal to goal. The sophomore quarterback, Eckert, is calling signals. Eckhart keeps the ball. A bad pitch out. A fumble. A loose ball. It is out of bounds at Army's ball. Army's ball. Army was the last team to have control of the ball there, and it is their ball because Navy didn't recover before it went out of bounds. That's out of bounds on the 19 or 20 yard line as they hit Eckhart just as he made that pitch out. He was trying to pitch to Kirschenbauer and the ball got away. So instead of first and or uh, first and seven for a touchdown, now it's second down and 20 to go for an Army touchdown. And Tom Bland is back in the game, number 18, Army's best passing quarterback. Clock is stopped with two minutes and 40 seconds left to play. 17 to 12, maybe leading. Got a flanking half back and a left end split. Bland is fading. He's rushed. He's going to run to the 20, to the 15. Nearly fumbled, but downed on the Navy 16. He couldn't find anyone open. Frank Vistas brought him down, number 52, and Frank Dadlio, number 88. We have two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game. Army's ball on the Navy 16. And the Navy boy up slowly is number 62, John Hewitt who is being helped off the field, replacing him as Vern Von Saito. Army has a third down and 16 to go for a touchdown. For those that joined us late, Navy scored 17 points in the first half. Bellino running four yards for a touchdown. Mather kicked a field goal and a pass from Spooner to Looper for a touchdown with a two-point successful try. Spooner running it over. Army, coming back in the third quarter, marched 78 yards for a touchdown with Ruchat scoring. And they marched 83 yards for a touchdown with Ruchat scoring from a foot out. Army got the ball, couldn't move, punted, and Navy just fumbled. Army recovering on the Navy 17. They made a first and goal to go to the 7. A pitch out that got away, carried it back to the 20. Now they're on the Navy 16. 
third down and goal to go. Lana calling signals. Lana being rushed. The pass no good at the eight yard line to Kirschenbauer. Kirschenbauer, number 45, had his hands on it. And Army now has a fourth down and 16 to go for a touchdown. And you can bet there's a lot of discussion among the Army coaches as to just which pass they want to try on this play. We have two minutes to play as Army comes up with a fourth down and 16 to go for a touchdown. Landa throwing. No good, and maybe holds a pass intended for Kirschenbauer. Now Navy will take over and try and freeze it away. Well, the pitch out. On the seven-yard line, Hurt Army, they had a first and seven to go for a touchdown. Navy stopped them on the last series. Terry Deeks is in a quarterback for the Navy with a minute and 55 seconds left to go. Navy's ahead 17 to 12. Al Hughes flanking wide. Ball goes to McCune, the fullback. Navy, of course, trying to use up all the time possible. You can bet that Navy quarterback is in the huddle telling his ball carriers to hang on to that ball because the Army's going to be grabbing at it with both hands trying to cause a fumble. Army just walked in the call time to stop, uh, stop the clock with a minute and 45 seconds remaining. Tremendous game. Saw Navy had 17-0. Army come back for two touchdowns and had just been stopped by the Navy. Later this evening, ABC will bring you the fight of the week. Tonight's attraction will match heavyweights Billy Hunter and Mike DeJohn, a 10-round bout from New York's Madison Square Garden. The presentation is another exciting sports event brought to you by ABC. I told you earlier, this is the season for both teams. Somebody asked Wayne Harden yesterday. If he lost, he still had a good year. He said, if you lose to Army, it's a complete failure. The only objective of Army football, the main objective must be victory over Navy. It cannot be achieved by anything less than complete dedication. We've had that dedication here today by both teams. Paul? You will be seeing all the timeouts that Army has left in this case because it's imperative. Of course, they get a hold of the ball once more. They're trying to hold Navy from making a first down and call timeouts after each play to kill the clock. Navy, by the way, has had the ball for only 12 plays in the second half. Al Hughes flanking. The handoff goes to Bellino. Still by Vanderbush. You see there, Army has called a timeout, as we mentioned. And also, you notice that Bellino is running very carefully. Most of the time, as I mentioned, you'll see the ball carriers with two hands on the ball instead of one. Because this is the one time in the ball game they cannot stand a fumble. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the game today. We'll be with you next Saturday on our NCAA Game of the Week. Duke and UCLA from Los Angeles. Remember next season, support the college team in your area. With the outstanding spectacle of college football, fun for the entire family. Well, if Army wins this game, on their trip home, they elect the captain for next year on the train. They're met at the South Gate. Victory Wagon takes them into West Point. If Navy wins, the Japanese bell starts to ring. All tonight and tomorrow until the Navy team arrives back at the academy. And then each member strikes the e-bell off the carrier Enterprise to celebrate the victory. Ron McCune, then a fullback, Hughes is flanking and hitting his Bellino to the 19-yard line with Vanderbush and Jowen stopping him. And Army, number 64, Al Vanderbush, asks for time. And the time now is a minute and about 32 seconds left in this game. We could see, there's your clock right there. We could see almost a full series of downs by Army in this case. If they can get a reasonably good punt run back, and, uh, Arm, and Navy is unable to cover that punt too well, if they can get an Army territory, we might still see a possibility of a score because with passes, if they're incomplete, the clock is stopped. And if they are complete, the ball, of course, is moving down the field.
Well, the big play coming up now. Mather has gone in in punt formation for Navy. You'll be seeing him in a minute. And uh, another central figure will be number 44. Joe Blackgrove will be the safety man. There he is. And let's see what Army does now as Mather's in punt formation. The kick is away. A nice one. Blackgrove picks it up to the 50 and runs it out of bounds in Navy territory on the Navy 49. 35 yard kick from scrimmage. Hello, uh, Joe Bellino and Frank Vista cover the kick to drive Black Grove out of bounds. Now the possibility, of course, coming up, throwing to the outside, having that receiver catch it and run out of bounds to stop the clock. But of course, Navy is cognizant of this too. So let's see which one gets ahead in this guessing game. They're leaving Black Grove in the game, number 44, Speedy Back, who can take a long pass with his speed. A uh, minute and 23 seconds left to go with Navy ahead, 17 to 12. Landa, the quarterback. Waiting. A long one to Blackwell, number 44, over his head. Double teamed by two Navy men. If you saw the first half, they tried to hit Blackwell with long passes just before the end of the half. Kurt, that double team didn't mean a thing in this case because he had a yard and a half lead on both of them. Bellino and Hardison were on him. That stops the clock with a minute and 17 seconds left in the game. Navy 17, Army 12, Army's ball. Navy scored all its points in the first half, Army all its points in the second half. The lonely end is out. Here's Blanda. He's rushed. He gets it away. It's no good. Deflected. by Larry Graham, number 84. The pass was intended for Glenn Adams. Army has a third down and 10 with a minute and 12 seconds to go. Bob Eastman come in at left guard, number 69 for the Navy. Roger Zalesford, number 21, has replaced Joe Blackwell for the Army. Got an end split wide to the left. Zelkus in motion. Lana ran into his fullback. Now throws the screen pass back to Rushat as he comes to the 45 to the 40 and inside the 35 down to the 32 yard line. Stopped by Frank Dadlio. 55 seconds left to go. 50 seconds. The clock is moving as he didn't go out. Army lining up quickly with 45 seconds. First down on the Navy, 32. Landa, man, a trip and fell down on the 25. That was Ruchak, or our 21, Zalkus, who tripped and fell down. He was the intended receiver. And there's a the clock with 37 seconds remaining in the game. And of course, that incomplete didn't hurt Army as badly as it looked because it still stops that clock. Second down and 10 to go. Huffman's in a right tackle for the Army. Black Rose uh, for the Navy. Black Rose back in at halfback for the Army. Replacing Zelsford. He's number 44. And he's still a threat for the long one. Landa. Out of the pocket. Throwing deep. It is intercepted by Navy. That is Bellino. To the 20. Reversing his field. To the 25. To the 30. Bellinos to the 40, and Bellinos to the 45-yard line. Bellino intercepted on the one-yard line and ran it back 44 yards. The clock is moving, and it has finally stopped as Army dashed in the call time with about 12 seconds remaining. And that should do it for Navy, as Bellino grabbed that one off. It was intended for Black Rose. Earlier in the game, Bellino ran 57 yards from scrimmage from the one-yard line. And this time, he intercepts in the one-yard line. He's tired naturally after that long haul. And that tremendous change of direction he has, his cutting and swerving ability. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, probably the greatest back in the history of Navy football, who has set an all-time record this year for the Navy. He has scored 18 touchdowns. He has scored 110 points. He has averaged 47 yards on quick kicking. He's a good pass receiver. 
He blocks, he tackles, he does everything to put the numbers up on the scoreboard. What does he do for an encore, sir? <laughs> the clock shows us about 12 seconds to go. Navy's ball. Bellino's coming out and getting a tremendous ovation. Al Hughes is flanked. There's the sneak with a penalty marker down. Penalty marker down. Offside against Navy. I want to thank Gene Kelly very much for his help today with statistics and details on the game. Gene, one of the outstanding sports announcers in the country from Philadelphia. Neither team has won two or more straight since the Navy cop three in a row in 50, 51, and 52. And Deeks, the quarterback, just taking the hand off the fall on the ball, and that's it. Navy wants that ball. They've won it by standing off Army in a tremendous game. There goes Wayne Harden, the Navy coach, out on the field. Navy in the light suit and the dark hat in civilian clothes. There go the goalposts as Wayne Harden moves out and Dale Hall, of course, will come out to meet him. And here's the Navy. Navy 17 and Army 12. What? Here comes Christmas gift goof number one. Wrong color. Here's gift goof number two. Wrong size. And goof number three, a gift he can't use. There's one sure way not to goof this Christmas. Give paper made pens. Paper made pens make goof proof gifts. There's never a worry about size or color or style. And a paper made is a gift everyone can use. This is the famous Capri Mark III. Here's the petite and lovely Lady Capri. Or give the luxurious Capri Mark IV in gleaming jeweler's finish. All paper made pens are unconditionally guaranteed. If the paper mate you give doesn't perform, we'll replace it. So don't goof this Christmas. Get paper made pens at the paper made gift bar. Paper made gifts are goof proof. You have just seen the Navy win today, 17 to 12. They led 6 0 at the first quarter, 17 0 at the half. That Army put on two long marches and had a first down and seven yards to go for a touchdown when a pitch out backfired. And then Navy finally held on with Bellino intercepting that pass in the one yard line, running it back 44. And there is the tremendous crowd of 100,000 today who watched this game in beautiful weather. Looks like Joe Bellino right there. And uh, that's the Navy publicity uh, director, John Cox, along with him. Bellino, number 27, I think they're trying to get Joe down to our on-field camera. And there is our ABC TV camera downfield. Bellino wrapping up his sensational career, the Naval Academy, and uh, we'll see who we have to represent the Army cadets who certainly were a fighting, scrappy team in that second half today. Kurt, we might make note of the fact that we might see some new robes at Navy tonight because traditionally these cadets and Cleves and, and uh, all these people bet a robe against each other in this contest. Well, let's go down to the field now to Bob Neal and our post-game interview. Ladies and gentlemen, we've seen some great finishes in football, and this one certainly was a bright one today. Over here in my immediate right is Joe Bellino and his mother, and I imagine this is one of the great moments of your life. It sure is, Robbie. Thanks a lot. This is your mother here? Uh, yes, this is my mother. The first Army Navy game she's seen. They tell me that uh, Mom here used to look out the window when Joe was first playing and help him out, huh? Oh, <laughs> Joe, uh, this is uh, Captain Al Vanderbush of Army. I know that this was a tough break uh, for Army to lose this one now, but uh, you certainly gave it a great fight, didn't yes, you? Yes, sir. With you. Breaks maybe in the first half, we might have had the ball game. I'm pretty well, sure we had it in the first I, half. I have to say this, uh, over the years, there have been so many great classics between Army and Navy, that this indeed was one of the real brilliant ones. You had a chance to win it in the dying moment. It just didn't quite come through. A great play by Bellino, but certainly Army uh, has nothing to be ashamed of today, Al. Well, it's a win. That's what we were out for, and we didn't get it, so I don't think that uh, 
We have anything to be happy about tonight. Well, I know that the Army men are sad, but I want to extend to you our best wishes for the future, Al. You played the game like a true Army man. You tried your best, and that's about all anybody could expect you to do. Thank you very much, Bob. Thanks, Al, very much. Thank you. All right, I want to talk to Mrs. Joe. Bellino here. Here's Al Vanderbush. Like Mr. Uh, Joe Bellino, Joe, you've made some great runs. Uh, is this one of the uh, first times that you've uh, come up with a key defensive catch like that? Well, uh, I would say yes against Army. Yes, sir. Against Army. Well, I, I, uh, I could have been the goat today, as you know. Well, I wouldn't say I had so. to make up for something. I'd say the goat was really uh, jumping today. Oh. Uh, Joe, that first uh, run you made when you were way back there on uh, Navy's, I think it was around the nine. You broke outside the left side and got through, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did, sir. And then your touchdown run, I believe you went outside the right tackle and broke through. Well, it was supposed to be an inside play, but it looked too clogged up for me, so I ran when outside. you saw that ball coming, did you just say, come to Joey? Well, yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Bellino, I, I know this is a happy... This is Joe's father here, Mr. Bellino. Oh, that's right. This is your brother. Who's this? My brother, Tony. Fine. Well, congratulations to the Bellino family. Congratulations to Navy. It's been a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Joe. Good luck to you. Now let's go back to Kirk Gowdy and Paul Christmas. Well, that was quite a story. My man's son. Incidentally, she used to be his greatest coach in baseball, correct all his mistakes when he was a little boy. Now here's Paul Christmas for the wrap-up. Just a brief uh, wrap-up on the scoring. In the first quarter, Navy recovered an Army fumble on the 21 and went uh, 21 yards in four plays. Bellino sweeping his end for four yards and a touchdown. When the kick failed, the score was Navy six, Army nothing. In the second quarter... Mather kicked an 11-yard field goal, making the score Navy 9, Army nothing. Then a little later, Spooner to Looper. A fine 13-yard pass, making it 15 nothing Navy. And, and the two-pointer, uh, Bolito, incidentally, tried to sweep and then lateral back to Spooner, who went over, making the score 17 nothing at the half. Army came to life in the third quarter and in 14 plays went 78 yards from where Al Ruchatz made a one-foot plunge, making the score 17-6. The two-pointer failed. The score remained that way until the fourth quarter. And again, Army went 83 yards in 10 plays. Ruchette's plunging one foot, making the score 17-12. Again, the two-pointer failed. And that was the final, Navy 17, Army 12. And here once again is Kurt Gowdy. Well, that brings us to the end of today's NCAA College Football Game of the Week. The final score, Navy 17 and Army 12. Today, we'd like to thank Bob Glass, who spotted Army, and Jack Stevens, who spotted Navy. Our thanks also to these two fine schools from the United States Military Academy, Superintendent Major General William C. Westmoreland, the Director of Athletics, Colonel Armory S. Adams, Jr., the Sports Publicity Director, Joe Cahill, and the head coach, Dale Hall, and his staff and their great squad who made such a tremendous comeback. And from the United States Naval Academy, the superintendent, Rear Admiral John F. Davidson, the director of athletics, Asbury Coward, the sports publicity director, John Cox, and head coach, Wayne Harden, and his staff, whose Navy team this year compiled the outstanding record of nine wins and only one loss. They should be very proud of their team. Now, friends, remember there's no more enjoyable way to spend the Saturday afternoon than watching college football. Support your team by attending their game. Next week, we'll be in Los Angeles for the game between the Duke Blue Devils and the UCLA Bruins. NCAA football telecasts are produced by Rune Arley. They're directed by William Bennington. Our mobile unit and crew today were from ABC New York. The technical director was William Morris. So this is Kurt Gowdy, along with Paul Christman and Bob Neal, saying so long from Philadelphia. Remember to stay tuned to College Football Scoreboard, following over most of these ABC stations. The NCAA College Football Game of the Week has been brought to you by... And by Humble Oil and Refining Company, America's leading energy company, whose happy motoring stations bring you fine products and service coast to coast. And by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the 195 adjustable razor that adjusts to your skin and beard. 
the remarkable Super Blue Blade, all but unbelievable shaving comfort. And foamy, the cream of all instant lathers. Courtroom intrigue, as an underworld kingpin fights to beat the rap in the Roaring Twenties. That's the Roaring Twenties. Tonight on ABC.